You're tuned in to today's Live at Five. Before we jump into today's episode, I just want to remind you that this show is only possible because of the continued support of amazing people like you. You can continue to support us by subscribing to this YouTube channel, sharing an episode with a friend, or signing up to our Patreon page via the link in the description below. From there, you'll be able to access some exclusive bonus content and dive deeper into the world of Live at Five. Now, without any further ado, let's get right into today's show. We hope you enjoy. Hello there. We are Live at Five on this Sunday, May 3rd, and uh, we hope that you're having a great Sunday afternoon. Um, And we're joined today, as always, except for that one time, by uh, our uh, producer, Darcy O'Connor. How you doing, Darcy? Hey, man, I'm doing well. Um, I've, I've been found again and dragged back to my post <laughs> after desertion. Well, I, I, really, I, really missed, I, I really missed you, especially when the, when the stream went down. And Thanks, man. I, I, lost my, I felt like I'd lost my way in life. So, um... Unfortunately, my substitute wasn't of the same quality. <laughs> it was like well, a we're... Ferrari in for a Daihatsu. We're, tra- we're trying to run interviews. It's just really tough right now, you know, because um, anyway, uh, for those of you out there who uh, who who have an Italian-American side, uh, Darcy nearly uh, made a sacrilegious statement before. It was just it was just slightly saved by the fact that he managed to retain the uh, the ethnic group that he was going for. So he, so he, he took he takes he takes Dean Martin over Frank Sinatra. Uh, I'm sorry. But just, hey, he's, you know. As uh, as our guest just said to us behind the scenes, uh, Frankie was for the nonnas, and <laughs> and Dino was for the ones who know. Well, I, I, you know, <laughs> uh, we can talk about that all day if we need to. But um, you know, I had a, a hypothetical idea that it would be amazing uh, to have Bob Dylan do a Frank Sinatra tribute. I just think I just think "Fly Me to the Moon." <laughs> Fly me to the moon would just be. Uh, Another another worldly thing. Anyway, we're not here today to talk about Frank Sinatra tributes, Dean Martin tributes. We're not here to talk about any of that. Uh, we're here to talk to our special guest today, who is uh, a singer with an incredibly eclectic background, wide range of musical accomplishments that we want to talk to her about. She is a radio producer. She's been a television producer, and she's an all-around awesome person. And her name's China Moses. But before we get China on... We're going to uh, check out a video performance of her playing with a big band. I can't remember the name of this track, but we'll hear more about it after when she's on. And uh, you're listening to Live at Five, and uh, this is China Moses. My breaking point 
agape, agape. Fui. Breaking points. Hey there, and we're back live at five. And that was China Moses on a tune called Breaking Point. And uh, China is joining us today from, from Vauxhall uh, on the other side of London. So uh, it's really good to see you. It's really good to see you. <laughs> so, um, you know, just from a really broad standpoint, I mean, I was kind of, I was listening back to your records. Obviously, you have Night and Tales and you have the um, Dinah Washington album. But then before that, you you were China and you did some like really awesome R&B stuff in France. I checked it. I, I was into it. <laughs> Did you check out if you I, find I, that? I found, I found it. I found it. Like you know, nobody ever finds that. I have, a, I have, I have a lot of time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I just thought about, you know, and, and I, you know, I want, I want you to describe how you see it as well. But you know, it's interesting to me that you know, being a jazz singer is different for everybody. Like saying, "Oh, I'm a jazz singer. Oh, I'm a jazz musician." It's, it's different. So. How have you, you know, how, how have you, I feel like Night and Tales has kind of drawn all these things together. It's got a little bit of the R&B China. It's got a lot of the jazz China. It's got, you know, what's, how do you balance all that? And, and how, how do you throw it all in the pot together? So my, 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 my musical journey is a very simple one. I don't like doing music alone. So the sound that is created is always me plus different entities. Um, and I have a wide appreciation for music, you know? Um, I'm a frustrated rapper. <laughs> uh, my first demos when I was 13, I was rapping. I wanted to be a rapper in French. Wow. In France. So basically when they found out that I could sing, they were like, stop rapping, you're horrible. That's my childhood dreams, you know, I wanted to be the next NC Light, Nina Cherry, you know, I was like, I, you know, I was all for like women's empowerment, and, you know, I wanted to be better than the fellas, you know, I had that whole mentality, I was a straight hip hop head, and um, I had to find a place, and luckily enough, I think from coming from French hip hop, the world of French hip hop being the only girl jumping on the microphone when all, there was only rappers, you know, in the in the parties when, you know, I was a teenager. I wasn't right. in the clubs, but I was there. Um, I think that gave me a really wide appreciation for music because in those hip hop parties in the 90s, the music was wide. You know, we still had the culture of the breakbeat, like that was in the parties and you still had the culture of the DJ being the master server of new sounds. Mm. So if you decided to take the party somewhere, even if it was like a hip hop soul party, if they decided to introduce the crowd to drum and bass, you know, the crowd would go crazy because that's their favorite DJ, that's who they follow, you know, that whole thing. So. I hung out with a lot of DJs and that made my mind really, really like, I was wide off from the start. So my whole problem has been trying to narrow my wideness down. Right, right. And um, my, my, my last project, Night and Tales, was, you explained it perfectly, it's exactly me trying to finally find a way to narrow it down. and. I stayed away from jazz for years. Like nobody could get me to sing a standard. And one of my first recordings was me singing Lover Man on this compilation. And I, I was find that one, but I will. Uh, it's, a <laughs> the, it's a compilation called Jazz à Saint Germain. And my mom is singing Watermelon Man and me, I'm singing Lover Man. All right. And I'm 16 
and I'd never really sung a ballad before in my life. My mom was there when I was recording and I cried because it was so hard. Wow. Like, wow. she didn't tell me that one. She's told me a lot of things about being an artist, about being your own producer, about being the only woman in the band. You know, she's told me a lot of things, but she didn't tell me that singing a ballad was probably going to be the hardest thing that I was ever going to do in my life. Wow. Wow. And uh, you can hear it on the track. Like my voice is like cracking. It's really, it's really, it's really weird. And from that moment on, I was like, I will never sing jazz. Y'all can, y'all can keep that. Thank you, my ancestors. Beautiful. You know. Yeah. Running through my brain, it's in the veins, it's in my hair. hair. Well, that's the, that's the thing I'm is that you, know, you have you have you have a unique you know kind of family tree in that jazz yeah, yeah, yeah. jazz is in your is is it's in my you know, blood. It's, it's in my the, blood. yeah it's in your blood it's the family business it's the family yeah. dna and um but it's but i think the thing that was interesting to me about hearing you know about hearing the your know, your earlier stuff is like you know my mom tried to teach me how to drive you know or my you know we're italian my mom tried to teach me italian i couldn't learn That's italian from my mom <laughs> huh yeah <laughs> I couldn't learn Italian from my mom. I couldn't learn to drive from my mom, you know, because it was like, it was too close to the, to, and then, and then later, you know, when we kind of, you know, it, you know, I, I learned it from, from outside. And when I learned, listened to your early stuff, it was like, okay, wait a second. So the jazz was there in your blood, but you actually came to it. You came to it later by yourself, you know? Yeah. Is that is that true? Am I just making that up, or is no, that? No, you're not making it up. I came to it organically. Listen, I was in a metal soul band when jazz came to me. Wow. So I was in a metal soul band. I was a presenter on MTV France, uh, doing a daily live show. I was an it girl. Um, I was loud mouthful. I still am loud. <laughs> um, I was still always, you know, one of the fellas, um, and. I was doing, at the time, I had completely stopped doing music right. because I had a live show, a daily live show. When you, anybody who's done TV knows that even just one weekly live show, it's just so much work. You know, you just get cut off from the rest of the world. Um, so music was out, was not an option. My, um, I was signed to Universal, uh, Univ uh, not Universal, Virgin Records for signed in 96 and they dropped me the second year I was MT at MTV. So that's 2005. So they dropped me. I was like, well, you know, I tried. I put out three albums. It was fun. I had the time of my life. Right. Um, you know, and I was like, oh, maybe this TV thing, this is, you know, this is what I'm good at. Right. You know, and music will always be a passion and it'll be fun, you know but it's definitely not my mission in life. You know, I had made like, you know, I was pretty, pretty clear on my talents and I'm pretty har a harsh critic as most artists are. We're very harsh critics. So yeah. I was like, you know, it, I wasn't the, one of the chosen. It's okay. Right. I'm a crate digger. I know how many incredible talents don't get chosen, you know? Yeah. So I was like, hey, maybe I'm one of those talents. That ends up in, you know, somebody's record shop and collects dust and somebody will find me years <laughs> you know, later. I was, cool. I was really at peace with it. Wow. Yeah. And I was, I got called to do background vocals for this French uh, singer songwriter, uh, incredible uh, singer songwriter. Her name is Camille. And, um, and she does like a lot of just like acapella vocal stuff. So she's got me doing like guitar sounds and, and all this weird, you know, snack, crap, coal and pop. Um, <laughs> BB. And uh, this pianist meets me, sees me and it's like, hey, I have this thing down in the south of France. Uh, I'm friends with Camille's father, come and do it. So I went and did that, it was, it was cool. And then he was just like, hey, you know, I have a friend who does this jazz festival. He was asking me to do a project. Are there any singers that you like? And I was like, dude, Dinah Washington. Like, right. that's it. That's, yeah, yeah. that's my go-to. That's my girl. That's my spirit animal. She's everything to me. He's like, okay. And that changed my life. 
And so at the same time as he asked me, a friend of mine had this rock band, this metal band, and they were in a competition and their lead singer had a hissy fit drama queen, you know, meltdown and yeah. left the band and they were in the quarterfinals. And I was backstage drinking beer, smoking cigarettes. And I was like, well, <laughs> I don't need a singer. Yeah. And so those two things happen literally simultaneously. So one night, you know, I'm po you know, pogoing and, and stage diving in hot pants and wigs and sequins, you know, and, you know, with a bunch of guys with long hair who are jumping up and down the stage going, <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day, the next day I'm doing, you know, I got a man who was always late. In and then the next day I'm like, hey, we'll swim some stuff. <laughs> I had like this triple, triple personality. Yeah, triple personality, and they were not meaty. Oh my right. God. Then at the same time, I was emceeing in clubs for the MTV DJ. So I was like, hey, everybody, put your hands up in here. It was insane. Wow. And at that moment, I realized, I'm like, listen, if that's not a stronger message for music, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to go back. Right. And that's what happened. I went wow. back and did that's... this Adam Washington tribute. And that was, that was the game changer. Right. Yeah. Right. So that, that happened all in the space of a year and a half. That is so cool. That is so cool. Well, we're gonna we're gonna jump into some more music from Ooh. China, and this is this is from the Night and Tales tour. So that's yeah. her most recent album. You can check that out. Um, I have a great story for this. Oh, tell yeah, tell us, tell us. Okay, so this is Leopolis Jazz Festival. This is in Lviv, um, uh, and Joe Armand Jones uh, was uh, touring with me. So on stage is Luigi Grasso, Neil Charles, Mary Alexa. And Joe Arman Jones was coming from, I think it was coming from an Ezra Collective, uh, collective gig. He gets stuck in Warsaw uh -oh. because the plane was delayed. So misconnection. So basically we don't have a pianist. And I find out the day of that the gig is filmed by like seven cameras for, you know, 4K definition. Um, Perfect. And so we scrambled to try to find a pianist. And, a one, and, and at one moment, my musical director at that time, Luigi Grasso, the, the saxophonist, he was like, I'll fucking do it. As a time, <laughs> in this cool, skeleton way. Uh, he was like, I'll fucking do it. And I was like, I need a bottle of champagne for each one of those mus musicians because people <laughs> have a different kind of sound check. And that's what this is. That is so cool. <laughs> you're, you're listening to Live at Five with special guest China Moses. And what's this tune called, China? It's called Put It on the Line. Put It on the Line. Your melody is sounding good to me. Each and every note all the chords you're laying down are like a way. Have I heard this one before? You know some brothers talk like they do what they don't. <laughs> I'm tired of playing games, you're messing with my will. And I told myself I won't. And the stakes rise with each sip of wine. A bit scared. To take a chance, but day it's fine. Gotta put it on the line. Yeah. When the audience is gone Do you play another song? Can't help but think about what's in it for me I string me along Well, if you don't take a risk You never know what things will be So I'm gonna take the leak Cause playing 
safe will kill you eventually. And they say the heart heals in time. A bit scared to take a chance, but they it's fine. Gotta put it on the Put it on the to that bridge. I don't do regret. I won't let them hold me down. I'm not quitting yet. So let's Hey there, and we're back live at five with China Moses. Um, that that concert you were just telling us about was, uh, you know, it was I mean, incredible. <laughs> incredible. You know, we were just talking about how feeling. You said before that you 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 like to make music with people. You 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 find you you find comfort and you find inspiration in in community. And you were just saying how the guys that you were working with on that gig kind of just kicked everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, when level. you're minus a musician, when you're minus a musician, and I mean, Luigi plays piano beautifully. So there were some songs where he literally played piano, but on that song in particular, he was just like, you know what, I'm going to just play this Barry, you know. Oh, right. So that wasn't in the, that wasn't like. Normally there's a pianist. Ah, uh, right. So we're one man short, but right. on that song. That was Luigi's show. I, 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 tr I trust him. He's my brother. Like we've yeah. gone through, we've come up together. So um, he's the guy who gave me enough the confidence to actually be like, you know what? Yeah. Okay. I'm a jazz singer. Fine. Right. 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 Like, cause I would always be like, no, I'm not a jazz singer. <laughs> I mean, even my mom would be like, no, she's not a jazz singer. But what does it and mean I know to be what a she means when she says that? What does it mean to be a jazz singer anyway? I mean, it's it's a I'm it's a singer who evolves in the world of jazz. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's a jazz singer for me. Well, I, I also think of a jazz singer as a singer who can improvise on the spot, whether it's not not necessarily just kind of like, you know, whatever scat singing is, but just, you know, let's say you have a melody, oh, you yeah. don't you don't sing it the same every time. 
like um, like Sarah Vaughan. Okay, so no, I sing melodies always basically the same every time, which is really funny. All right, okay. Song, I can make up a song on the spot. Right. The the thing is, is that I'm not. I'm more. I'm a singer songwriter. Like all of my melodies, all of the music, it starts with me. So right, I, it's kind of tattooed on yeah. like that bass line of that song. That's how that song started out. I see like, what you mean. It's like. So I sing that into my phone. Right. Sing, your melody is sounding good to me. Each and every note, all the chords. That's how. That's how the song. That's the song, right? That's that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. And the same. I hear the chord change, but I can't play it. I know yeah, it's yeah. impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but, amazing. So you you write most of your you write most of your music, it, right? It starts with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it and then it just and then I go to hum I humbly check my ego and my non playing ass and go to <laughs> friends and talk about it and it grows. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So in that sense, I feel very much like a jazz musician. You know, I'm yeah. person, I can create on the spot from scratch anything, right. anywhere. Right, right. And well, that's jazz, isn't it? I yeah, mean, that's, I that's, there's no bad. I can't to save my life. Like, right, right, if, right. Like, if that, my life depended on it, I am dead. And that's, <laughs> I, I'm like one of those singers that comes up in the jam sessions where all the music, you know, all the musicians go, oh, please don't scat. <laughs> That's me. But wow. I'm also the singer that when I do come up in the jazz uh, jam session, I'm like, guys, okay, blues, E, slow, yeah. really, yeah. Slow. like slow, Shirley, Shirley Horn slow. And everybody knows <laughs> what I mean. Like everybody's like, oh, that's slow. Yeah. Right. This is going to get serious. Yeah, this is good serious. <laughs> so so I've, I, it took me a while to be comfortable with that. And Luigi Grasso is one of the reasons why. I became so comfortable because he's such a fucking badass. Yeah, yeah. I'm rolling with him. Right. Rolling up in the spot. So all the musicians are like, oh, Luigi's here. And they're like, who's that shit with him? You know? Right, like, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, like, you know that, you know that, you know the classic joke, right? Where the, right. Uh, where the, where the Pope is in the, is being driven by his chauffeur. And right. he says, oh man, you know, I just, because that's what the, po that's how the Pope sounds. He says, oh man, you know. Of course. Oh, I just, I really, I just, I, I need to blow off some steam. Do you think I could just drive the, the limo for a little bit? So they, so the driver says, okay, fine. So he's like, you know, going 90 on the highway, whatever, the Pope's going down. And then he gets pulled over and the cop pulled, you know, a license and registration. Then the cop sees it's the Pope and he goes over it and he says to his partner, he says, I don't know what to do here. He said, well, who is it? He said, well, I don't know, but he's got to be pretty famous because he's got the Pope as his driver. <laughs> and that's you with Luigi Grasso, I guess. <laughs> He's your Pope driver. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's pretty it's 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 pretty crazy. And he wasn't known, you know, when we started out. Well, so so tell us a bit. You know, you grew up in France, which is yeah, which is you know, it's super interesting because obviously you grew up with your mom and you were you met all of the jazz people that any jazz musician would want to meet. But, you know, I've been, I, I love going to France because I love the French tradition of jazz and I love the, I love the French culture and it, it, it just somehow it just syncs with how I think, whatever. But did it have an influence on you or did you kind of think I'm American? Like, how, how do you cut that mm. up? Well, it, uh, it's, it's not, you know what's weird? That's a good question because I always felt like I was an outsider. Right. I had to move from France to not feel like an outsider. Wow. Um, I've always been an anonymous, an anomaly. Uh, see, I can't even. Anomaly. 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 <laughs> right. Um, uh, so. In France, what I found really hard, I found acceptance once I fell in line with what wow. they think a jazz singer should be doing. Wow, right. That's when I found acceptance, is when I did the Dinah Washington tribute. 
Wow. Yeah. Right. Okay. Before that, people would tear me down. Like I couldn't get any love for my three precedent albums. They're like yeah. in the music world, but then in the, you know in in media and stuff, you you were owning media, it. I was an odd girl out. Where do you go? Sorry, oh, I got to change. Got to change my <laughs> battery. <laughs> He's he, like he's, he's like Casper at the front of the <laughs> um, But I got torn down um, in media. I was an odd girl out. There was a, there weren't many black people on TV in France, let alone black women. I had locks at dreadlocks at the time. Like I, I've always been, I've always been an outsider. Right. Okay. Um, trying to fit in, desperately trying to fit in. Like so. As much as I've always found places, people who would help me, you know, move along, who were open, you know, be like, come on, come with me for a little bit. There was always a moment where it would block. Wow. Hit a strong wall. And that's what happened with jazz. Like, right. I love my jazz people in France. Right. But as soon as I started to want to incorporate who I was before the Dino Washington. Like then all, like I couldn't get gigs. I right. I couldn't get booked with Night Intels um, until the album was signed. It started getting really difficult because they so, they're really slow. They're right. like, no, you must release the album. <laughs> and then we wait to see what happens. And then maybe we book you in the festival. And I know everybody. Right. Wow. So I'm sitting here with people who have seen me grow up playing the music. I know, I know that it's good. I'm not saying it's great. I know my Night and Tell albums is solid. Like, I'm like, y'all haven't heard this because I worked hard on making a very hybrid sound on purpose because it's my sound. This is what I want. I want people to know where it all comes from. I want it to be crystal clear. And like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing you've ever done. Can't help you. <laughs> Right. Oh, really talented. Oh my gosh, you're so popular on social networks. Can't manage you. Wow. Like, so I hit, I finally hit that wall. Right. That's why I moved. Yeah. So, so, so now you've been in London for what, two, two years? So almost three, almost three years. Three years, right. So as much right. as France gave me the whole start, you know, it's like, you know, they were like, yes, as soon as I started not wearing the retro dresses right and being cute and right. stuff you know and i was coming up there like being i'm free they were like what, what is she talking about <laughs> what is she talking about you wow. know but it wasn't and the funny thing is that it wasn't the audience like the audience no, no it, problem it, yeah. it would applaud me for being myself but all the people i know who book me all the bookers i mean i work at the the jazz, the jazz station in France. Yeah. I never played, and we and and uh, the 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 guy who runs the station, he's a, he's a friend of mine. I consider him a friend. He's never booked me at an East Jazz Festival with Night and Tales. Wow, right. But he did book me at at, Jane, at the Sam Jango Reinhardt Festival with with the Dinos, the the Dino right. project. Right. Right, right, right. But yet we hang out. I take them out when we go to London. I mean, it's yeah. it's all it's a my life. As I'm, a lot of musicians, I don't think could deal with the mind the mind fuckery that I have to deal with in my in my, in my life relationships with people because right. I'm Dee Dee Bridgewater's daughter because right. I'm quote unquote popular for a jazz singer. Right. Because you know, it's like well, they also they also know you can do the Dinah Washington thing. They know that you can sing the shit out of standards. They know that you know you can, I can sing standards, straight standards, and they're just like waiting for somebody else to say that I'm good when I do originals. Yeah, it's like it's, so I had to move away from that. Sure, 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 sure. Place where I was unknown. Yeah. You know, and just be like, hey, up out of the middle of nowhere, people feel like, who's this chick? You know and try to slowly just make 
make my way slowly. Well, slowly. also, I mean, jazz is very, is very, has a very different connotation here, you know, because of the South London jazz scene, but also because of, um, you know, I mean, that word means different things in different, in different yeah, countries. Like, I mean, you go to, you go to the States and jazz means if, particularly you go to New York, jazz means smalls and it means people who have degrees in playing, you know, very cerebral things that are difficult, also enjoyable. Yeah. You go to Paris and jazz means Django Reinhardt, Caveau de la Huchette, like, you know, yeah. you know, 1950s and 60s. And it's, and it's, it's beautiful there. Yeah, and it's, every city has its jazz, its definition of jazz. Yeah. And it's but a it's, glorious thing. It was amazing how separate they are because, you know, as a, as a, as, as a, you know, in the, in the kind of information age where you can watch a Facebook live of, you know, a, you know, a piano trio in, you know, the far side of, I mean, we had an interview with a guy in New Zealand, our, our bar manager uh, is in New Zealand right now. And, you know, it's, it's amazing. The world's never been more connected, but those cultural differences still exist because of the heritage of the music in that, in that it country. It depends on how, it depends on how the black American culture has been received and assimilated in that country. Right. Like in France, they totally missed out on a whole period of the mainstream, totally missed out on a whole period of sequence funk and R&B and New Jack Swing. They missed all of that. Right. They were right. just like Aretha Franklin in the 60s. Right. right. We'll stop it right there. Well, yeah. Yeah. We like that. We, 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 like we don't that. have to look what? any farther. No, <laughs> no. We are definitely not checking for when Nancy Wilson did, six, you know, soul covers. Like, we right. were, no, don't, what, Carmen McRae did what? The Sound of Silence, what? No. <laughs> that oh, record is amazing, they. by the way. That's well, thank you. That is, thank you. But yeah. they, you know, you play that to some purists over there, they're like, oh, this is the clash of Jesus. That is her soul. Yeah. You know, it's just like, it's like, you know, it's not that deep, you know? Right. It's, right. It, it's just music, y'all. Chill out. So, so, have you found have you found the London you know the London move? Just you know, and broadly I speaking, I find it highly eclectic. What I love cool. about here, um, what I love about here, which is something I can't, I didn't find in New York either. Which is, I mean, just in my band alone. Come on, I have so Neil Charles, who goes also under the moniker Ben Mark, does deep electronica, right? right? And then we'll go to the Vortex or whatever and play free jazz. Right. Like, and he's he's playing bass for me, you know? And I'm just like, who are you? Right, right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, Marius Alexa, who's a cat from freaking Vilnius. Right. Went, who drove down to some clinic, you know, got inspired in right. Austria and was like, I'm moving to London to learn Afrobeat. You know, I'm like, you know, he starts playing Afrobeat and I'm looking, I'm like, are you really blonde and blue eyed? Like, where? Right. I, Isn't that an amazing I, thing? I mean, that's that's an amazing thing because the what's what's happened, you know, you used to the the American jazz scene in the 50s and 60s and even 70s to a certain extent. Yeah. But even, you know, for a long time, those the guys that were in New York, they they counted on being able to travel to make cash and they would come to Europe and they would tour that sometimes they'd stop in Denmark and make this huge impact. And you'd get these isolated players along the way, your NHLPs. The they called it what? We call it the Euroflow now. Euroflow, oh, right. Euroflow. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now, you know, there, there's so many, I mean, you, you hear people playing jazz. You, you hear a guy from Denmark that sounds like Ed Thigpen. You hear Joe Webb from Wales who sounds like Art Tatum. You hear, um, and it's and it's it's so inspiring that that the because it took a long it took a long time for that that sound and culture to disseminate, and it took generations. Yeah. But now you're getting this kind of really wide inspiration, and you get. You know, like you're describing these. You keep, keep, t keep talking. I'm, I want to hear it's about going, more of the band. Going, no, it's coming from everywhere. I mean, I, I, you know, I remember when, see, Joe Armand Jones. He he started playing with me because he was recommended by um, 
he was recommended by Steve Ruby from the 606. Right. Him and Mike Gorman. So Mike Gorman's been playing with me for five years. Joe played with me for three. Yeah. Joe then recommended me Ashley Henry because he, you know, he started his stuff started popping off. But the thing is that we're sitting in a car driving somewhere in the south of France because we all love those south of France jazz gigs. Yep. They're my favorites. I have a thing in South of France. Like I, I could just tour the South of France. It's, it's, it's wonderful. I love my people in the South of France. Um, <laughs> and we're like, to, you know, and Joe's playing us like, you know, the first, you know, you know, recordings of his first album. And, and I'm like sitting there, we're like bumping along and I'm like listening to this. And I'm like looking at Luigi and looking at the guys. I'm like, this is huge. Like, <laughs> This yeah. cat is bringing George Duke back and right. Seppi's Herbie and, you know, you know, you know, the bad boy Herbie, you know, right. <laughs> the, the, the one that people seem to forget existed. Right. Um, he's bringing back all of this stuff. And I was like, and then when he, he played me that song almost went too far. I was like, that's it. I'm like, that's it. I'm like, I will never see you ever again once this come out, comes wow. out. Wow. And so he also, Joe also introduced me to Nubaya, to all that stuff. And I'm like, these people are 20 years younger than me. Yeah. And they are so much cooler than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hang out with them. Marius introduced me to Ollie Rockberger and oh, yeah. so that's who I did my new album with. Hey. I'm like, cool. I'm like, in the second week I moved to London. You know, I'm hanging out writing with Ollie, who met me at um, Jazz Refresh at the Mau Mau. Like two days after, we're working at this house. Like that yeah. would never happened to me in France. And then I'm listening. Ollie Rockberg is like, you know, singer songwriter, fan of Billy Joel, loves layers. You know, you know that the you know the Phil Collins voice, as I call it. You know, and I love his stuff. And I'm like, but then this cat will turn around and kill it on the piano. Yeah, right, right, right. It's like, who are you? Yeah. I think that the way that that scene grew up, which is so cool, is that there there's an audience for it. So, because yeah. everybody's been checking out records for time, you know? It's like that. And so, you know, the, people would hear stuff and become amazing pianists, amazing whatever. But the thing about London that I find so interesting and when i moved here i thought this was just amazing was that there's so many gigs where you can try stuff out you know and they're not there nobody no, blames you for it <laughs> nobody blames you for it and you're and you're doing a gig you do there's like you know well there used to be hundreds of them all over town where you could just you could go you could do your thing yeah. and the audience would kind of give you the time of day and if you if it really hit then then you know stuff would happen but and people will tell you yeah. So, <laughs> it's a cool city for that. And I, I think that it being so spread out and yeah. being kind of, um, you know, at least in the jazz sense of things, you know, relatively um, adventure seeking, you know, you, you have a lot of different kinds of venues. You have, you know, the Vortex, you have the Cafe Auto. I mean, we have you guys. We like, have us, yeah. Like for just a quick second, I was speaking <laughs> to my mom last night. I was like, "Yeah, I'm going to do this interview with these cats, Kansas City." She's like, "Like Kansas City, Kansas Smitty, Kansas." City. <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, oh, "Okay." She's like, I, "I feel that I'm cool." I'm like, "You never heard of them?" She's like, "No." I'm like, "Mom, they have their own club." I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, "These dudes, these cats, got a bar where you can come and play, and they're a band, they're a collective, and drink." And records and she was like what this is the coolest thing i'm like welcome to london oh wow that's so cool i'm like welcome to london i'm like it's kind of like smoke smoke jazz club that has a label up you know up in harlem they yeah. have a label of smoke records but they don't got a band like all these places have label but they don't got a band. what <laughs> I'm like, you guys are like a tv show waiting to happen <laughs> like, oh wow well. like, you well, you know, of the jazz world, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we've, we've we've got the producer, so uh, th thanks, Darcy. Yeah, um, I mean, but the thing is that it's all pulled together by ideas and like and the the possibility, like, yeah, we can make this work. Yeah, 
Yeah. Why not? You're right. Right. You're right. You can make a... it work. And I find that London is really run by. Yeah, we can make this work. Well, let's hope that we can make this work when all this Ooh, comes back. The new, <laughs> the new normal. The the new normal. Y'all know how for how long we're gonna be out, right? I know. Out of work. Know. Y'all, y'all, long, long. But that's okay. We'll we make it worse. This. <laughs> no, no, we're, gonna, we're creatives. We're gonna reinvent it. We'll figure out ways to play. It just might not be inside. Yeah. Yeah. There's that's a lot true. Of stuff that's gonna start happening outside, like in New Orleans. Like, I mean, I see people go. Well, they to they have houses. They're doing concerts on porches. But they have the blessing of weather. They have the blessing <laughs> of weather. But we have, you, have you out, we have covered outdoor areas here. This is true. This is true. We'll, we'll make we have we have sweaters. We have jackets. We have raincoats. Yo, know, if up in Denmark they're ready to do drive-in concerts, we're gonna figure something out in the city. You I said it. Not. You said I, it. I know. I the artistic world will always. It's it's a hustle. It's a passion. We're like drug addicts to creativity. Man, you said it. That's true. We like need our creative. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I yeah. haven't been feeling really creative lately, but mm. we. At one point, everybody's going to go like, you know what? We need to find a solution to this, you know, find an avenue. It'll it'll present itself. There's way too many parks in the city for something not to happen. You said it. Well, China Moses, thank mm-hmm. you so much for coming on today and for well, thank you guys giving for us. Me. We, yeah, we finally give, did something together. We will. This is just the beginning. Getting, the beginning of a beautiful beginning. friendship. You do more. Yeah, have- yeah. I mean, I admire you guys so much, and and I think what you guys are doing is is it's amazing. It's crazy, and I am I'm down for the cause. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, yeah, really appreciate that. And um, yeah, let's 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 talk more about that and and get some some ideas rolling. Okay. I think we can. Well, thank uh, you for, for thank you for getting me out of bed on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Our <laughs> pleasure. Guys, so um, you guys be safe. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. And our our record of the day today is uh, China was mentioning uh, singers that go into crates and come out uh, fifty years later and and get on our rotation. This is one from Mavis Staples, who was a Samoan born. Mavis you know her, Rivers. Mavis Rivers, not Mavis Staples. No, 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 I'm Mavis s- Rivers. Sorry, Mavis Rivers. Rivers, yes, yes. You know her. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Mavis Rivers uh, was a a New Zealand Samoan uh, singer and moved to the States and made some great records with people like Nelson Riddle and also with Shorty Rogers. And this is uh, a compilation of her stuff with Shorty Rogers. She's a great singer and the records sound fantastic. So check them out. Also check out China's um, Night and Tales and all of her other records on Spotify and all other platforms. Make sure to click on the link below in our bio for a link to our Live at Five playlist and uh, a link to join the Kansas City's membership. Geez, it's like uh, I have so, so many instructions links. for you. Uh, you you're just going you're, you're gonna to spend the rest of the evening doing all of these things, I know. <laughs> Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Click on the link. Check these things. <laughs> all that said, we'll see you tomorrow Live at Five. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you soon. Thanks again for listening to Live at Five. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with every episode. You can also click on the link in the description below to sign up to our Patreon and find out where you can sign up for Kansas Smitty's memberships as well as purchase records and merch. Enjoy your evening and we'll see you tomorrow, Live at Five.